What's up, everybody? Frost Miller here once again. I'm the Croc Nick. I'm Jam and John. And we have an album review. And this is definitely one that we have been anticipating just because, well, I know I'm a giant fanboy of this band. And I brought up recently in a video, I think actually, well, it was kind of last year, but eh, whatever, fairly recently that this band has a perfect discography. And uh, I've been waiting to see if they kind of keep that average going. So we're going to go over the latest offering from Enslaved Heimdall. This comes out on the 3rd of March on Nuclear Blast Records. This band formed in 1991 in Norway. This is back when founding members Ivar was 13 and Grootle was 17. And I always like to bring that up every time I talk about Enslaved because these guys have been great since they were teenagers. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. haven't been great since even yesterday. <laughs> so, yeah, you guys are just, you know, yeah. fucking awesome. They say greatness is achieved over time. <laughs> where you're living right. proof that is not yeah, right, true. Right, That's absolutely not true. Look at us. Mediocrity, though. We're still working I on it. I excel, actually, at mediocrity. I'm still I'm, working on it. I'm almost too mediocre, I think. I'm very awkward. <laughs> anyway, this is their 16th album overall. I, again, have been a longtime fan. I think the first one I ever picked up was Below the Lights, and then that sent me off to anything with Enslaved's name slapped on it that I could find on CD and it still does. We actually went over their last EP, which we will get a chance to reference on this one, as well as uh, reviewing Utgard when it dropped, which I was a big fan of that one. I thought that was yet another awesome album because awesome is pretty much all that Enslaved does. And well, as for this one, I don't want to spoil it immediately, but uh, this is yet another amazing um, Enslaved trip through cosmic space Viking land. It's even kind of hard to describe what they do. Like, it is still rooted in black metal, though I would say black metal is more of a seasoning now than the main course. Uh, these guys have embraced prog so much, and it's been kind of steadily over a course mm -hmm. of albums becoming more and more progressive. And it, it may have culminated on this one even more so. I mean, I would venture so far as to say that they are now a prog band. And I, I don't want you to think that this is some hard shift and they've abandoned all their sound because they've just taken their sound and incorporated it all into one, like you said, a culmination of everything that they've been trying to do over the last couple of years. And it's all here. I don't want to spoil it, but man. We, we, we might have. Yeah. We like this. Right from the rip, atmosphere. Atmosphere is such a big part of a lot of Enslaved's work, but this really sets it up with water sounds and what we thought was a ship horn but i think it's like like a uh, just like a ceremonial giant Viking booming horn something yeah i mean it definitely sounded like, especially because they were on water i thought oh a foghorn but it's notably bigger than a foghorn <laughs> and big is the sound of this album now this was uh, mixed by jens bagren his uh, resume kind of speaks for itself. He does excellent work. And this is also mastered by Tony Lindgren, whose resume also speaks for itself. This album is gigantic sounding. Layers upon layers of you know, guitars, lush synths, vocals. I would say, vocally, this is one of their most dynamic offerings to date. Mm -hmm. Lots of clean harmonies. You have your Viking chants. You have just sort of somber, reflective vocals. You have giant soaring choruses at points. And of course, Grootley's token snarling black metal vocals, which are still among my favorites in black metal. He has mm -hmm. such an over-the-top voice, and when he comes in with those heavier parts, they sound even heavier just because he is bellowing forth whatever it is. It, it sounds evil. Yeah, it's so commanding. When a lot of um, artists growl, you know, you, you're like, man, those are good growls, but you know, I'm not really feeling it. In this case, he's almost like yelling growls at you, like, fuck you, listen! And that's what it is. And that also goes in with like the mix too. Like they come in at different points in the uh, mix. Like you'll hear them kind of in the background, way in the forefront, kind of, you know, moving around a little bit. Like there's a lot of great vocal hooks in here, but man, the music is absolutely amazing. Behind the Mirror is a great pace setter. There's lots of cool shifts in terms of the mood, in terms of the vibe of the song. Opens up with sludgy riffs once you get past the resounding doom horns on the shore. Mm -hmm. And it, it's these thick, heavy guitars that I noticed this time. I liked Utgard. I thought the mix kind of, you know, uh, maybe took a little bit off the guitars. They still sounded good. But this one, the guitars sound more prominent. They're back. They're right in your face. And the 
tone clear but gritty at the same time, if that makes any sense. Uh, immediately, I, I got reminded of, like, Intronaut. So yeah. to speak, because it's got that clean, that, that stoner metal vibe, but it's also got that clean stoner metal vibe, like a polished sound. And again, with those progressive elements and rhythmically, it has a lot of like fun. Like, of course, you have some good steady grooves. You have blast beats, you know, all the things that you really expect out of this band. But there's a lot more polyrhythmic play. And I think mm -hmm. that is still largely in due to new drummer. Ivar Sandoy or Ivar Sandoy. I know there's Ivar and there's Ivar. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. I'm sorry if I'm fucking up both of your names. But <laughs> We're he, bad at this. Yeah. He came on on uh, Utgard and honestly the drum work I think dramatically improved because mm -hmm. the old drummer was good. But I think in order to move on to this more progressive material you need a drummer that can do some flashier stuff. A drummer that can think a little bit outside the box and not just lay so heavy into following a riff or just to keep a, a driving rhythm like this guy incorporates a lot he works with the riffs a whole lot better yeah and he also contributes vocals on here and he has some excellent catchy clean vocals as well in terms of like those giant soaring vocals that i think Ever did i know it also might be their keyboardist uh hakan hakan it's got the a with a little circle on top i don't know what noise that makes <laughs> but anyway he also does clean vocals too and amazing synth work, but the song The Eternal Sea is possibly one of the most progressive songs, like in terms of like pulling a lot more from prog rock in general. Like the opening on it has this kind of little opening, little flurry of like interesting scales and notes. It kind of teases you a little bit, like it's a little bit off time, like very reminiscent of, you know, bands like Yes and Emerson Lake and Palmer, Rush. And then it gets into this giant big rock hook like this might be one of the catchiest songs i think that enslaved is written and that is definitely saying something because they write catchy stuff but they let the clean vocals just kind of rock out this section with this steady groove this big riff these soaring melodies the synths that accompany it are absolutely perfect and then we get into like these wild transitions that enslaved is known for and transitions are all over here but this transition on here is sharp like, mm -hmm. it goes from this big, proggy, sort of, like, you know, big rocker to flat-out, like, Bathory and Venom worship with this D-beat section. Groot Lay is snarling his fucking dick off. <laughs> it is just vicious, and it comes out of nowhere. Like, legit, we were caught off guard by it. But after that little part, it gets big and soaring and epic again. Huge, huge moment for this song. It's epic. It's yep. gigantic. Again, the clean vocals take over, and... Man, the clean vocals are exceptional on here. Yep, very much in the vein of, I thought, Stephen Wilson. Yeah. Porcupine Tree, his solo work, even Opeth when Opeth was more proggy. Yeah, I mean, they're definitely really yep. proggy now, but, uh, but... But more heavy proggy. Heavy. Heavy, heavy darker proggy. Yeah. But speaking of uh, things like wild transitions, I have to talk about the song Forest Dweller. It starts with this really soft kind of Opeth-ish info, something off of Deliverance, I would say. Very pretty. Um, but the cool thing is, is it had it has this build where the the transition kind of snakes. So like in the beginning, it starts off as acoustic with a driving riff behind it, and then when it changes, it turns into the driving riff and the acoustic behind it. So like it as it builds, it kind of just snakes around, and that's a really something neat that you'll find on the whole record. While they make a bunch of hard shifts, they're all liquidic. Yeah. I, I noticed that too, and it has a lot to do with like guitar and synth interplay. Like again, I used to there's like acoustic riff, and then the main riff, and then there's like a lead melody that is also harmonizing mm -hmm. with the synths too. So there's a lot of like really cool interplay there. And when it comes down to transitions, like they're they're subtly led into, mm -hmm. they kind of morph into one another. It's it's really wild to hear because like. You know, we listen to like a lot of like techie stuff and such, and like there's a lot of like sharp, wild transitions on there, and I love that sort of shit. I think yeah, that's great. But when it comes down to like clever transitions, like wow, I didn't see that coming, or how it just kind of subtly morphs, like like wow, wait, hold on, when did that actually change? Yep. But I and like it. it. There's such subtle changes, but the when you kind of zone out to this record, it just it catches you at times, and you go. Wait a minute, weren't we just jamming a second ago to something that was the same song? Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. And it goes into like this really cool black metal section, but 
what they do with it to kind of make it more proggy is they have this whole Hammond organ thing too. Mm. It's like, you know, deep purplish. It kind of smells, I mean, call it black purple, I guess, because it's definitely very black metal centric. It's got a good, like kind of double time groove to it, but you have all this playful Hammond organ, like very John Lord style sort of like lead work on the keys behind it. And the keyboard work on here is absolutely amazing. Coming in at different points of the album again too, like sometimes they're very loud and out front, sometimes they're, again, more classic prog, sometimes they're kind of even techno-y, like the opening of Eternal Sea. Like yes. this is little sort of techno flutter, is like, oh shit, did we just, you know, get to a fucking Norwegian rave or something? Hopefully everyone's still dressed like fucking Vikings, because that's the sort <laughs> of aesthetic I want. But also referencing guitar interplay and transitions once again, uh, Congelia, one of the most interesting songs on here. Transition-wise, I think it's one of the most interesting because, well, part of it doesn't transition for, like, uh, most of the song, and it's the yeah. drums. The drums have a static blast beat. They kind of fade in, and this is, I think, one of the coolest you know parts in this album is how they do this sort of um, layering on here. Like, mm -hmm. it comes in bit by bit, like, opens up, you have this blast beat, and then you have this very cold, icy black metal riff, like, you know, maybe... A little bit of a nod back to Frost. You know, there's definitely some black metal in here. Again, it's more of a seasoning. But this riff is definitely more cold and black and darker. But then the next guitar comes in and it's playing just a completely different kind of riff. Like it's mm -hmm. more like a staccato riff. It's kind of a little chuggy with a weird accent. It's a little off time. But it's how these two melodies and two guitar lines kind of complement each other. They're completely contrasting one another, but they work well. Yeah, it's, it, they contrast, but they don't clash. Yeah. The fact that this song is a continual build, like it, it comes in, builds in with a really quiet, like D beat, and by the time you're full bore, it just keeps adding parts. But at no time does it seem cluttered. At no time can you not differentiate anything. It's like gradually they just add things to the ear. It's like adding another course onto the dinner. Yeah. You like the fourth one? Here's the fifth one. Mm, that was good. You ready for dessert? Okay. They give each section room to breathe, too, so you can hear that level kind of come in. It's like, oh, all right, they added this synth melody on there. Or, ooh, all right, now the bass line's coming in. And, you know, it, it's really cool just to hear this song be constructed pretty much, like, right in front of you. And then, it, again, it holds on to this rhythm for the longest time and then just has this giant, heavy, fucking stomping sort of melody at the end with really good, clean vocals. And again, it kind of changes the mood of the song, mm -hmm. but I don't know, like it's just how this song flows. I think it's really unique. And of course, more great guitar play. Uh, the song Kingdom is another one that I find absolutely fantastic. Opens up with some more crawling, kind of proggy riffs. Mastodon. Very Mastodon-y. Actually, yeah. it's, it's yeah. very close. But it starts going into their more like you know progressive territory, big sweeping synths. But man, this song has like a really thrashy feel towards the end. Like some of the most aggressive riffing that I think is on the album. It's more chuggy. It's more yep. just I don't know punchy. Punchy. Yep. Aggressive. And aggression is definitely a part of this. This isn't just all mind bending prog and like oh you got to pry open your third eye <laughs> if you lift your Viking helmet you know high enough so you can see. Ugh. But um. It's it's more of like just sort of a journey. It's it's really all over the place. Like there's more reflective moments. There's doom. There's you know happiness. There's triumph. It's really quite the journey, and that's kind of what I want out of prog in general. Me but too. Especially with Enslaved. Like there's a lot of theming that goes on with their albums. Like this is about Heimdall, I assume, which is the god that is pretty much stuck watching the Bifrost for eternity. But I mean, he can see everything, which sounds like kind of a burden and maybe a little creepy too. Like he watches you pee, possibly. I don't know. I mean, he could choose to. He could. He could. He could. I hope he doesn't. But he I hope he doesn't. He could. I mean, I mean, within his realm of possibility. If you had to stand by a rainbow bridge for eternity, you'd probably look around and try to find some, you know, just different shiz. Like, oh, 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 they're masturbating to that. That's <laughs> questionable. And I would say at its bleakest, its doomiest, the last track, Heimdall, the title track, holy shit. Man, Ugh. all right, the synths that come in on this song are some of the heaviest synths I think I've ever heard in an Enslaved song. Like, these synths are the equivalent of a Meshuggah riff. Meshuggah meets, like, fucking candle mass. Like, it's just... Bong, bong, wow. Heavy, wow. bendy, thick, disgusting guitars, but backed up by this fucking 
monstrous fucking synth. I don't think I've ever described synths as monstrous before, but man, these are fucking heavy. We're talking about like keys that are like this big and you gotta take your fists and fucking on top of them. Like, or a large Viking war hammer. Ooh. That'd be more fun. Yeah, it's definitely darker and heavier, I think, than anything on the record by far. Possibly darker and heavier than anything I've heard come out of them in a while, to be honest. Uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a weird, dark, but really fucking cool song. Yeah, because when it transitions out of all that darkness and doom, it transitions into this weird spoken voices, like and they're, they're like mumbling. It's like it's like just in the distance, like ah, oh, that's but overall that there's like this haunting like little guitar melody thing like it's nothing real intricate by any means but it's just it's there just to create extra added creepy atmosphere yeah and again atmosphere is one of the big connectors on here like you can feel this album you can almost feel the settings on mm -hmm. some of this mm -hmm. it, it's quite amazing like, again i keep waiting for this band to miss and they don't in fact, yeah. I would say they always come back invigorated. There's like an endless well of creativity in this band because, again, they are executing their sound, which is, I would say, kind of uniquely them, but they're also adding stuff. And again, these more proggy moments that keep coming in over the course of the last few releases, I think really just opens up a whole other avenue of different songwriting techniques that they're employing. Yeah, because on, on Utgard, you know, there's a couple songs in which they employ some of the, the proggy material, and you're like, all right, well, this is a, a definite direction in which they're going, but, like, here they just fucking nailed it. And uh, to further add to it, you have Caravans of the Outer Worlds, which we actually went over when it was a solo EP, but honestly, it feels more at home here. Like, that was a great song that was surrounded by, like, some other, like, kind of half ideas. Probably yeah. stuff that I feel like they were work shedding for this album. Yeah, it feels like it makes more sense wedged into here because there's there's context to go with it this time. Yeah. You're not like, oh, here's just this random weird proggy song. Like, no, it, it actually fits now. Yeah. This is where it belonged all along, and I actually like that they stuck it in here. And even though we reviewed it on uh, the last time we did, reviewed the EP, it just sounds better. We still like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. I mean, I think it got, you know, a slightly different mix. It feels, you know, bulkier, a little bit heavier. Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, galloping rhythms in it, you know, they feel more aggressive and punchy. I don't know. Uh, overall, I mean, I, of course I fucking like this. Like, I kind of knew I would, but man, like, this surpassed my expectations. And, you know, I, I felt very strongly about Utgard. I really enjoy mm -hmm. that album, much mm -hmm. like I enjoy all of the Slaves album. But this one, I feel like, is a further push into like proggier territory and I feel like they hammered out what maybe they didn't quite get right or at least I thought you know they were still working with on Utgard this is way more refined and I'm gonna go ahead and give it four and a half stars this teetered on a five like I really enjoyed this this is thoroughly engrossing this band's batting average remains perfect in my mind and I, I find new things to appreciate about this band with like every listen. Like this is a constantly evolving project. And while there's still snippets of their older selves, like, you know, some colder black metal stuff on here that is really good and well utilized to kind of darken up the album, the prog metal on here is absolutely fantastic. The musicianship, I could go on about every fucking member doing an exemplary job at their instruments and you know, vocals as well. I think the clean vocals in here are, are exceptional. Like this is just an amazing fucking album. Again, you know, I, I expected a really good album. I, I got uh, something even better. So yeah, if you're a Giant and Slave fan, reasonably sure you're gonna like this, unless you you prefer more of the you know black metal stuff from the earlier days. I know there may be like a slight divide in the fan base, but just check this album out. It's absolutely fucking amazing. Again. Well, while Nick gave it a four and a half, I've got to, man. It It's a goddamn five. It sounds amazing. It's mixed to perfection. I like the prog shift. I like the even harder shift that they made, and they did it so well. And they did it without really fully telling you that they did it. Like, there's so many times when you listen to this record that you just... You're like, hold on, when did that happen? And the, the transitions just being liquidic in themselves. Like, they don't skip a beat. 
and they add so much to every song. Every song sounds different, first of all. That you can't listen to one of these songs and be like, oh, that song's like Congelia, or that, that sounds like Kingdom. No. They each sound individual, and they each bring something new and fresh and fun to the table. And I, I, I mean, I want to listen to it again. The, the minute we got done listening to it, I said, well, holy shit, I want to jam this album again. Like, it's that good. It's everything you like about Enslaved, and if you've been following their progression and wondering where they're going to go next, it's here. I could gush about it all day, but I strongly advise that you listen to this. Please, if you like Enslaved, listen to this. And even if you are a little bit divided on the fence about this not being as black metal as it, you think it should be, that is still in there. They're still incorporated. There's just a whole bunch of new earworms for you. Yeah. So... That's that's all I got, man. It's a five for me. I don't do that often, but fuck is this a good record. So, if you enjoyed this <laughs> gushing slash review, <sighs> give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe, because we do stuff like this all, all the, the time. time. We are also on Patreon. If you'd like to help us out there, there's a link down below to thrallsmetal.com. We are going to eventually reload up our store and work on some <laughs> distribution stuff. I know I say this a lot, but you know, we've got a lot of stuff we've been working on, yeah, so this will probably be post- Denver Death Fest. Post Denver Death Fest, uh, April 20th through the 22nd. Come out and join us, man. We we worked really hard on this. We've got 28 bands on the bill, including Pyrexia and Narcotic Wasteland and our buddies in Cathexas and uh, a whole slew of awesome music. And the max price for all three days is 60 bucks. Come on. I've seen, I've, I've been to the festivals, a couple of them now, where it's not 60 bucks, it's way more. We've got a lot of sponsors now. Thank you, Dead Records. Thank you, Doom and Groom. Thank you, Prior Custom Craft. Thank you, Metal Maidens. Thank you, Denver Metal Militia. Thank you to the new one that just jumped on board. I'm so sorry, I just saw it today. I promise I'll get you in another video, but thank you. You know who you are. Um, Hasbro, right? Yeah, <laughs> Hasbro, right, right. Hasbro and uh, Coleco. Coleco Vision. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. Dipping back to the... Anyway, not important. Um, come on and join us. It's going to be a pretty good time. I'm very excited. It's just been an honor and a, and a blessing to be involved in something like this. Again, this is something I've always wanted to do. Anyway, it just turned out to be bigger than I thought. So, yeah, fucking A. Denver Death Fest. Come out and join us. And, of course, thank you all so much for liking, subscribing, following... We absolutely love doing this. We love, you know, just showing you guys all the cool fucking metal we possibly can out there. This has yep. been an absolute joy. I know this is the rambling section, so I'm going to sum it up really quick here and give you one giant thank you to thank everyone. You. And we will catch you later.